it's, it's, it's a Playboy affair. All right, we're going to get into our predictions for the NFC North this season. And I'm pretty interested to see where we got things going. I'm going to kick this one off. You know, of course, uh, what else can I say besides bear down? So where do you have the Bears finishing in the division? All right, I think we're going to go 9-8. and eight. I think we're going to go 9-8. and eight. I think some people will try to tell you that this is too high of a prediction for the Bears. And I'm 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 not interested in that. Matt Nagy has never had a losing season. And Matt Nagy is a quite good coach. He has a very high floor, and this team is in a much better position than it was last year. I'm looking at our schedule and I'm not too concerned with the strength of it, even though it's one of the hardest schedules in the NFL next year. It's like uh in the top five or something like that. And I think we're gonna rise to the challenge. I'm looking at this and I Everybody wants to hear it. What's your ideal start date for Justin Fields looking at our schedule? And for me, I think my favorite ideal start point for Justin Fields would be week 12 versus the Detroit Lions. Walk him into an easy one, right? And then he gets the Cardinals after that. Then the Packers, the Vikings, the Seahawks, the Giants, the Vikings again. Right, I think that's the point where our schedule gets the softest. It's right after we finish up with the Ravens defense, the Steelers defense, the 49ers defense, and the Buccaneers defense. Right, that's a that's a really tough slog of weeks back to back to back of really strong defenses. We assume to be that I would rather have Andy Dalton deal with. Week 12 is my Justin Fields start point. I think we're gonna take a game from the Packers this year. I'm debating on whether it's going to be early or late. My current feel is is more likely to be our late season game with Justin playing than it is our early season game. Uh, And that's just if they keep Aaron Rodgers, if they lose, if they lose Aaron Rodgers, I think we can easily go 10 and seven. Yeah. That's the elephant sitting over here in the room is, is Aaron Rodgers going to be in this division week one and for the entirety of the season? Yes. I think we go 10 and 7 if he's not, not 9 and 8. I think now, we go 10 and 7 if he's not. I'm going to assume he's going to be there. Okay. The Packers, unlike the Houston Rockets, seem very comfortable. Texans. Or No, I mean like the Rockets with James Harden. They oh. they are they seem very comfortable being uncomfortable. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I don't think they're in any rush to trade Aaron Rodgers no matter what he does. Um and so I think he's going to be there. I think you're I think I actually agree with you. I didn't even look at your your stuff. I agree. I think the Bears are going to finish 9-8. and eight. I think they'll finish either second or third in the division, depending on tiebreakers with the Vikings. I have the Vikings finishing at 9-8 and eight right now. Um, I mostly agree with uh, even the couple wins and losses on there. We kind of lined up somehow. Okay. Football gods came down and blessed us. Um, I think it's going to be – I'm going to talk about Minnesota for a second. I think Minnesota's going to have a bit of a rough year for what they're expecting. They think oh. they're going to be a really good team. You think so? They think that. You think so? I think so. I honestly think that they're actually getting ready for Kellamond, and they don't think they're a good team anymore. Yeah, I think they're getting ready for Kellamond, and I don't think they think they're a good team anymore. And I think that they are prepping this team for Kellamond to take over and them to try to open a Super Bowl window. Now, I think their biggest problem, the reason why they are not the team that they even thought they were maybe six months ago, I don't know, maybe their opinion has changed, but they just paid Kirk Cousins again not too long ago, less than a year ago. So maybe... It, is it a short deal? I'm it's another sure. short deal, but, but his first guaranteed. deal was short. Yeah, yeah, all guaranteed. But I think most of the games they lose, I have them losing to teams like the uh, Seahawks, the the Rams, the Chargers, the Cardinals, Cleveland, Baltimore. Those teams all have better quarterbacks. I think they're going to beat you all. Dallas? Yes. You can't stop the run. Dalvin Cook is going to eat you alive. Teams Um, that can't stop. I think teams that can't stop the run, they are going to have their way with. So I won't get that granular just yet. We will when we get closer to the season. But I think as of because, you know, things a lot of things can change. Dalvin Cook is rarely healthy for an entire season. He could get he could get hurt. Cowboys could trade for somebody. A lot of things could happen. All I'm saying is looking at their schedule today. Looking at the quarterbacks they play and the teams they play, I think eight losses is very reasonable for them, and I think manageable for them. And I think, again, tiebreakers in the division between the Bears and the Vikings. So you also had the Lions. Where do you have the Lions finishing this division? I think the Lions will be lucky to get out of this season with two wins. 
Oof. I, like, I, I think the Lions You are, think Jared Goff can't get it done in Detroit? Uh, With no receivers? Uh, Julio trade. That's why the Julio trade should happen, <laughs> by the way. That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> even, if, even if you think Jared Goff is good, and even if you think that O-line for them is significantly better with the addition of Sewell, which I think both of those things can be true, this team is devoid of talent at the skill positions. And it's going to be very hard for them to put up points and they have never had a defense that's been a large stopper. Like for Chicago, we could be like, sometimes it's hard for us to put up points. That has been a consistent problem for us over the past couple of years. But our defense frequently bails us out. They'll have you in the game. Exactly. The Detroit Lions are in the lose-lose situation of your defense can't bail you out and your offense can't be explosive. We know Jared Goff can't make the same type of explosive plays Matt Stafford did when he was around. And then we know they don't have anywhere near the same level of wide receiver talent that they had when Matt Stafford was around anyway. Ke- Kenny Galladay signed that big old contract up in New York, getting ready to catch dimes from Danny Dimes. Yeah, I-, I just don't know. I think this team is going to be pretty bad. And I think the only wins they're going to get is probably a fluky win against the Cardinals. Week 15, for some reason, they just they just love beating the Cardinals. Like their last two matchups, they beat the Cardinals and tied the Cardinals. At Arizona. And that's odd. And I think they might also snatch one off of like the Vikings, a fluky in divisional in division round. So yeah. here's what I'll say. I, I think they do finish last in this division. I agree with you on that. I didn't run through their schedule the same way that you did and go through it week by week, but it feels like two is a little low. It's hard to be that bad in the NFL. I'll say that. Even bad teams win. The Jets? Like I said, it's hard to be that bad. They literally they lost the game almost on purpose because the defensive coordinator caught a zero blitz when they could have just played regular ass prevent defense. It's hard to be that bad in the NFL. Even really bad teams accidentally win three or four games especially in a 17 game season that's all i'm saying okay i think they will be bad i think they will be the fourth team in this division i just think they might win more than two games if i was betting over under i'd bet the over on that Uh, okay that's all i'm saying that is fair (laughs) i would like it'd be hard to not bet the over on that just because of like (laughs) it's so probability (laughs) spread yes they just reached the margin for saying wins (laughs) yes yeah (laughs) um i think we've been dancing around this for a little bit here, but I think we all think if Aaron Rodgers is in Green Bay come opening day, the Green Bay Packers are the best team in this division. I went through their schedule. I think it's reasonable for them to go 11-6. and six. That's about on par with what they've done the past two years with Aaron Rodgers and Matt LaFleur. That's even accounting for having some injuries at running back or wide receiver throughout the year. I think they take lo- a couple surprise losses, but some other reasonable ones. So I think they lose at San Francisco. Um, at Minnesota, those are the kind of surprises. Oh, man. Do you think San Francisco is a surprise? A little bit. Uh, so just a tad. Just I a think, tad. I don't think it is. Defense is solid, but can Jimmy G get it done, or will this be a Fields game? Uh, or not a Fields, but a Trey Lance a, a Trey game? Lance game. I think it's going to be a run game game because that's who, that's who they want to be is. to the Green the yeah. Packers. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. I, that's also why I think you're right about the Minnesota game. The strong run games will always give them a problem. Um, other games, they lose at Kansas City. I think that's very easy to pick. Yeah. I think they probably lose against the Rams. I think that's reasonable. They have a shootout or something. Lose at Arizona. Lose at Chicago. Okay. If, if Aaron Rodgers is there, I think, okay, so I think if Aaron Rodgers is there, they probably go closer to 10 and 7. And that's just because I think it's going to be a tough year. Like, everybody in the building is going to be demoralized, right? He won't want to be there. Everybody knows he doesn't want to be there. There's going to be a ton of tension with the front office, ton of tension with the head coaches. Like, the cloud that hangs over this team, if Aaron Rodgers comes back without some grand, grand reconciliation, is I think it's going to put a hamper on them. I think they'll lose some games they're not supposed to. That's reasonable. Okay. So Packers win this. If Rodgers is not there, who wins the division? Bears? Oh, yeah. If Rodgers is not there, the Bills will win the division. We'll get two wins off of the Packers. Like I mentioned again, we'll probably be a 10-win team. And I, I think that helps us out a lot. Uh, I, 
I, I am interested, though, if he's not there to see what Jordan Love is. Well, I'm interested in what people think. Do you think that Aaron Rodgers will be a Green Bay Packer on opening day? Hit us up on Twitter at the Fly Route Pod. We'll have a poll for you. Uh, please vote, and we'll let you know the results of that next week.